good morning everybody I've been uh, working on the the cracks on the home the log home filling them in with this energy seal I've got that I ordered up it came in and I've been running been running some videos and all that and I didn't even realize I was not recording I don't know how that happened but I looked and the light wasn't on I thought it was so anyway I'll go ahead and show you what I've got done I did do some of it last night but main the main ones were were today um, the recordings but I'll just keep on going what I'm doing anyways what we got and you can see how the chinking it's not chinking it's just anything it feels in the cracks it's simple it's easy comes in really good it does a good job it is stainable so it, and it's actually gotten lighter as the time has gone on since yesterday um, I've been doing most of the cracks everywhere you look I've been just filling them in getting them done just decided I'm gonna send some over here already cleaned up and uh, here's what I just left off at I just finished doing this and some of that light light stuff that's down down right across here and that bottom crack is where I ended up at. Actually, I know I didn't. I ended up right over here, up up underneath here, and you can just barely see it. But um, so now I got to move over here. Um, we, I'm going to continue here. Let me get set up, and um, I'll show you again how this, how this all works. And um, Alright everybody, here we go. I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm gonna I'll go ahead and fill this in. Now I'll go from right here, do some of this. I'll do a little bit of that. The camera's pretty far away. I've got zoomed in so you kind of see this what goes on. Which really needs a wet rag. The rag, I got a pot of, I got a, a big container of water and soap in it. Wet rag. Um, you're caulking. Basically all you're gonna do is go in there and just squeeze it in. You don't have to jam it right in there because all you're trying to do is have a seal on the outside. I mean, you want to you, you do want to fill the space, but you don't have to get crazy with it. Do that, and come over here and just lay it right on there. You can get messy with it. You're fine. You're going to squirt it in the hole. I showed you before. I believe there's backing rod in here, although that film may be erased. I'll have to show you in a minute. You just go right on through, close as you can get it. It don't have to be perfect at all. Not right now. And then here's the funny part. Here's my rubber spatula. It's worked perfect. I love it. All you're going to do is push on it, set it on there, and you can just drag it right along. That's going to force all that stuff in the hole. You're picking it up. It's on here. And I just, I got a flat container, and I put it right on there. And I just hold on to it for just a short time. I'll go back through, see if there's anything that needs to be done. I'll kind of push back this way. That up there. I'll just touch it real quick. Everything looks good on it though. It looks really good. So now what I'll do with that up there, that spot, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the tape. I don't need it there no more. Take the tape off. You really don't have to do nothing else to that spot. Um, why don't I use tape on these other spots? Because it's so zigzaggy, and it's just to me, it's it's not worth the hassle. Because now I'm going to show you. I smeared that on, and there is there is stuff there. All you're going to do is take this wet washcloth, and you're going right back over where you were, and it takes it right off. Go on top, and same thing, it's gone. I mean, you'll have to go over a couple times just to make sure, swap over the washcloth. But it's really, it's there, it's gone. These knots become a little bit of a problem because it's kind of rough surface. But, go through one more time. And this is the time consuming parts, this here. But you can't not, you can't get that blue tape because these cracks are not straight at all. They zigzag. They're everywhere. 
let's do another one here. I'll do another video close up better down below. I really thought I had video running earlier. This is, like I said, this is special stuff for it. Let me continue one. I don't know if you can see this one. Let me try it one more right here. That's done. You're going to go ahead and take the spatula again. And you're just going to go ahead right on through. You're going to pick up everything you just put down. And then you'll have like little cracks left over. And this is where I take this stuff. I put it back on there again. Same as right there. I'm not too worried about that because it comes right off. Not, I don't know if you can see that, but right there's another crack, a small one. Basically, I'm done. And what I'll do is all this extra waste that you see, because it will take probably about 15 minutes and this will start to get a coating over it. But I, I don't know if I've got the camera. Just smaller cracks. The end, they're real small. I've got one about a foot down. I can use that, but I have one here. I'll take the spatula and just spackle it, you know, and touch it up and it'll be good. So let's go ahead and wash this down. Wipe this down with water. You can actually go right on top of it. Easy if you can. And all you're trying to do is just get all that glue off there. That's the uh, sealer. I keep rolling the rag around to help get rid of some of the, the stuff I just wiped off of it because it does get dirty and I'll have to rinse it out here in a minute. This takes like 24 hours to, to become enough where you can, uh, I think it's 24 or 40, 48 to be able to stain on it. But it never hardens, it stays soft. It's a, uh, it's made to log homes move, cracks move up and down, in and out. So it's made to stretch and stick. It sticks right to it. it sticks right to the log. It's just special for this. Regular silicone you cannot use. There you go. I look okay, I've got most of this side of the house done over here. This north side. But I did want to show you what we do. When you have a big crack that's like this right here, you do not want to just squirt the sealer in there. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do, and this is called backing rod. It's round many different sizes. I believe the smallest you can get is quarter inch and then they make the real wide ones that go in between logs when you have a different type of logs like I can't remember what Swedish Cope or I forgot what it's called. Anyway there's backing rod. All kinds of sizes. I could not get this, a smaller one of this locally and this comes in you can get them in 50 foot rolls, 20 foot rolls but what I did was is I went ahead and I took my backing rod, the length I wanted, and I quartered it. I just sliced it down the center, quartered it. It works good for this small area. What you're trying to do is basically, let's see here. We're going to, I've got a few cut up. What we're going to do is just force that in the hole. You're just trying to go in maybe an eighth of an inch, not much. Just force it in the hole. Because all it's going to do is just fill in just a little bit of uh, the cavity. And what that gives it is, is two things. Well, yeah, two things. One, the silicone sealer is going to seal to the top of the wood, the bottom, and now the back, where the where backing rod is. We'll go ahead and do this one right here. You just push that. It's like, just like foam. You push it in there, all the way around, all the way, all the way down, all the way through. Make sure it's not sticking out because you don't want you don't want that to show when you put the sealer on. And we got too much here. Let's cut that off. Just keep on pushing it all the way in. Go over here and hit this side. Once you get it in there. Packed in there really good. 
Like I said, it's only going to be about an eighth an inch pass. That's it. I need to do this side here too, but we'll do that later. But I want to show you another thing. What we've got is this stuff is called energy seal. This is made for these cracks. It's made uh, where the logs butt together for those cracks here, like I'll show you later on. This is made by Permachink. They make the chemical. I buy all my stuff through the log company that I bought and built my house through. And um, so now I'm going to go ahead and seal this. I'll show you what we do here. What happens. What we're going to do is you use a caulking gun. Of course those tubes can come, I think they come even bigger tubes. But all we're going to do for right now is we're just going to go ahead and squirt a little bit in there. You see what we're doing. It's not much. Do it again. This is the harder part to do. I'll get that later. I'm just trying to show you real quick what we do here. All right. And like I said earlier, don't laugh because I use a spatula. It works really good. It's soft, very pliable. I reach in here and I just push on that and you're oozing, you're pushing it in there and you're drawing out the leftover silicone that you got. You can clean it up really good and I just take that leftover. By the time you're done doing the home, you get you use all these little pieces up because you're always going around and touching up somewhere. So you have really almost no uh, leftover when you're done. Now that that's like that, now you're going to take your washcloth and you're just going to go through there and clean it up. It cleans up really good. It's better to have one that, uh, that is soap and water because it clean, the rag cleans up a lot easier. Just keep rotating that cloth around. And what I usually do is I take my finger, when it because it there's a strip of that wood right there, I use my finger to clean it up after. So when you're done, it looks like that. It's all, I mean, it's almost perfect. I'll work on that end piece after. It's really hard because this is um, shaving wire. It's a real rough texture. I got a piece right there that I need to do. I got all this to do here. Got a few more smaller ends. I'll be about done with this side of the house. As you can see, this side here. We've uh, got all that done up there down here it's all pretty much done as I'm going along I have another bucket in the washcloth that I use because it's been a week that I've uh, I'm actually just wiping the logs down as I go just to make sure that it all looks good it's, it's free and dirt because if uh, everything goes good most likely tomorrow I'll be putting the clear on what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and do this part right through here this is a butt to butt seal and this is a log that I could see from outside to inside so I am pushing in the silicone in this joint but just for that reason, because it is uh, one portion of that seal, that joint, it was, there was a gap. It was somewhere up here. And that does happen sometimes, and it happens just because of the way the logs are. They just, they just move around.
All right, now I'll go and just take this tape off. Now, if I can, there it goes. And I don't have to touch it no more. Your goal is to fill the gaps, which we have done. Um, and it really don't make too much of a difference here because I've got a very big overhang. So rain doesn't hit here. Now if you didn't have an overhang, then water would hit and every one of those cracks collects water. That will promote wood rot. 100% it will happen. So and that's why when I built this house, I went with large overhangs. The sun never hits the bottom of this house. The only time it, it would is the very front, that's the west. It's going to hit about right around this time of day right now, and it's probably about 5 o'clock. But I've got trees on the other side, so for like an hour, it hits the bottom part of my logs, and that's it. So I have no, no sunlight worry, no nothing. Well, now that the, uh, the, this is the next day, all of the sealer has dried. I mean, it never fully dries. It's dry enough to accept stain. So now I'm just going to put a light coat of stain. I've already started doing some of it. Actually, the whole wall's done except for right here. And it don't take long to do. It, that's the stain right here. And this is a permachink stain. I get a little brush. And you just take it, and you're going to go right on that, the, the, the sealer line. That, and you're just going to put stain on it. Just brush it on. Yeah, you make a little mess on the edges, but then you just wipe it off and it'll stay in there. All it's doing is changing the tint. And you could probably put a couple coats on and make it a little bit darker if you wanted to. All I want to do is just make it change the tint just a little bit, and I'm fine with the way it looks. It don't have, because you'll you work forever to try to get it to match. And uh, I don't want that to happen. I just want to do it and that's it. Anywhere that has this knot you see right here, sometimes it's real rough and that white or that 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 uh, silicone stuff got in there and it's hard to uh, wipe out when it's rough, it gets in the groove. Um, I also go ahead and, and really soak it down really good with this and to make sure that um, I cover it up, I can cover it up some of it with that. I'm going to put one more small little wipe on that. And you can see it's just changing the tint barely. All right, now I take a rag, and I'm just going to completely just wipe it off. Whatever's inside that stained area, it's done. I'm not going to change it no more. This, this stain actually darkens up more and more you work with it, and um, that's what we need to do. And you can see up here, that there I'm going to do too. And the dab a little bit more stain on it. I'm just going to go right along the whole thing real quick like. There's a clear that's on this wood already. And so the stain will not adhere to the, the clear anyway. So now I'll just take that, wipe that down again. And that's it. Let me... I'm doing the more... When I built the house, I didn't do my cracks. I wanted the house to go, try to go through its expansion that it does um, open and close. Now these joints here are done when the builder raises the house, puts the logs. He butts them together. They actually uh, put like a D-shaped seal in it. And these are called D-shaped logs. So they do the same thing, but they put it like in the middle. And... Um, um, and then there's a, and that is actually a glue. Um, it is a sealer, but it's a glue. I think I said that the other day. And then they also do each layer between here and here. These have double grooves. Let me show you. Right here's perfect. All these logs, they notch this out to cross this log. But this log, literally, if you look here, male, female, they, this log would literally sit right on top of here. Well, what they do is when they do the fine, when they lay together. Here, they lay a big bead of silicone and across this front right here. And you can see some of that silicone right there that goes across. That would go here and here, and that glues it down. But also there's bolts. There's a bolt that goes from the top of this one, goes all the way down straight through, and ends up about three-quarters late. These are 14-inch bolts that come through here. 
they uh, use um, they use uh, nine inch bolts they can use nine inch six inch all depends on what size logs you've got um, they're just really long torque um, torque bolts um, so anyway that's what we got for right now uh, tomorrow I will go ahead and put the clear on it um, yesterday um, actually they like it in thin layers not a heavy layer when you do it um, I'll see how it turns out after this one next uh, when I treat it tomorrow I just possibility I may go back with another coat in 48 hours we'll just see and after that I probably won't have to mess with down this area other than washing it sealing it doing this all that for several several years um, up top gable ends my dormers yes um, I definitely will have to be doing them and that that's what these are up here let me show you real quick you probably see them in the pictures uh, the sunlight may me mess with you those up there I will have to do um, that will have to be washed too and sealed but th that there I wash it all the time and once a year I try to put clear on it um, just because of the weather um, it, it's in weather all the time it, but that is the north side so the sun really don't hit it the south side's really bad um, that's a lot of upkeep up there and if I was to do it again I believe I probably would have put cedar rough sawn cedar um, up top and that's an option that I may do five ten years whenever I got done doing everything I want to do over here I may want to change that out because it's that's a lot of work because it's brutal in the sun the high heat here in Oklahoma and hard to keep it clean um, it's just up there non-protected and I think that's a mistake I did when I built I should have put cedar up there uh, rough set rough cut cedar and um, let it age on its own I think it's beautiful alrighty good enough for now we'll see you in the morning when I do the, the clear bye well, here's what it looks like completely done now I'm already gone through rechecked it all you can see how it looks really good now the color mitts in, goes in there really good Everything looks good. So tomorrow is going to be the day that I'm going to be. I'll uh, put the clear on here. I did want to show you the the bucket you, you, uh, that we get. It comes in five gallon pails. This here is Lifeline Ultra Two. Now they make many other um, styles of stain, um, different qualities of stain. Um, this is uh, a stain that I bought. Um, well, I bought this stain just last year, but I mean, I've had I've been using this for five years, so they've changed what they have. But this is what I have. It's uh, from Permachink. They are the ones that provide all this. It's, uh, I love their their stuff is good. I am not sponsored by them at all. Um, the color of mine is natural. That's what that color of the wood is. Um, and once again, I am not sponsored by Permachink at all. I'm just sh showing you what I use, what I've used for a couple of years. I like it, and I don't mind telling people about it because it, I like the, what it is. It's good stuff. Uh, you stir it up really good. Okay, here we are. We're going to go ahead and start the clearing the house. Um, just start, just wiping. Uh, this this brush is, is an old brush. Probably should be thrown away, but I've been able to keep it alive. Um, they're about a $45 stain brush, and um, I've just been trying to keep it alive as long as I can. But anyway, um, I got the clear in here, and like I said before, it goes on. It goes on white color, and you're just trying to put it on the whole wood. Everything you can find. Just get it wet, and that's clear. It's going to dry. It'll, it, it, will, uh, it looks white now but it will dry clear. And the goal is not to put a real thick coating on it. You don't want no runs because you'll see our clear run. You're going to be putting on, in my case, this might be my last coat, my only coat. I'm not sure. But I will know later today, um, in a couple hours, I can look at it a little bit more and I can tell if I'll need to do it. But. I mean, you can see it's actually starting to even dry, not dry, but go clear. You just keep right on going. That's, that's what I like about this brush. I've bought other brushes, and they just don't last. They don't hold the stain long. And this here carries a lot of stain. It works good. 
and uh, that's what I'm going to keep on using. I, my other brush that I have, I've worn out uh, on the cedar. I got another brush that was uh, for stain also. Now this log stain and clear we're putting on is, um, is strictly for log homes. You, if you use paint, you cannot paint a log home. You want your wood to breathe. You want it to, um, uh, you know, you want the whatever water, if it gets in it, on it, you want the wood to breathe. So, um, this the stain is strictly for logs. It's made to, to dry and it can breathe through it. And it's, it's almost, at first, for a while, it almost feels like it stays rubbery almost. But eventually it does harden up. You can see how quick it goes. And I'll do the front of the house uh, maybe next month or something like that. Right now I'm going to do the, this is the north. I'm going to go ahead and hit the south side of the house because I've got a lot of projects I've got to do that's going to be in a garage and the garage is on that side so I figured while I'm there and this stuff dries or whatever I can just mosey right on over to the garage and you know, start working there and be no problem. So it's, you can see how it's drying up clear. It gets just changes color. Once again, we're just gonna put more on there, and then I can get this clear on that stain. This other stain, it doesn't affect it too much at all. You really don't even see it. I don't try to get on there. I just if you get it on there, don't let it break your heart. And they just really pop. They're really shiny. And they'll stay that way a long time, too. And that's the, the other reason to keep these things washed, keep them clean. I mean, you keep your car clean. Yeah, I know the house is just a lot bigger, but if you want to log home, you're going to want to keep it. You know, you spend this money with the log home, you want to keep it up and so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It uh, just has this really pretty shine to it. And I'm pretty sure you can probably see that. It just looks really good. And there's the stain I put on yesterday. And then in that, in that uh, silicone grout there, it's, that's the stain. It looks really good. It blended it good. And the longer it sits, the more it's blending into it. So we're looking really good. You can see the difference right away from... This is the last log I've done to there's the next log that I have to do. And you can tell the difference in this. And it stays like. All right, I want to show you something. This is maybe a half an hour, no more than 45 minutes after. It's, I mean, it's literally just a very tack, not even tacky. I mean, it, you can see the major difference in the wall, how nice it is. And if you kind of scooted down this wall here and then moved on the other side of that window you can see how try to zoom in you can see how nice that is and then you can scoot over here and it's kind of dull and see how you can see how it is there that is I just did this one which is still it dries as you see it right here well I went ahead and looked at the back of the container and it's saying that it, it I thought it dry took 24 hours to set it tells me that with the temperatures we're at now that in an hour right around an hour if I do we have figure that I can come back and put my second coat on and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I do see it a couple areas it's kind of dull finished in a way right in here and you see it and it's one of protected I, I prefer not to have to redo the clear again for several years so let's just do it right when we're here it only gonna take me less than an hour to do the side so let's go ahead and spend a couple hours and get it done twice I'm done move on to the next side you can actually kind of look down there down and that was at the second log up and that area is kind of faded in a way but that is the texture of the wood but still it absorbed the clear into the wood and you see a little bit there but the other ones don't have that so it's better to go through let's do it again and uh, I'm done. 
and the, the beauty of it will be there for years and years. I never put the second coat on it after I built the house. I've been busy, and that's my fault. And as you can see, that's the front of the house, and you can see it looks dull, it looks dirty. It's dirty. I have not washed it this. Um, I didn't wash it uh, this past spring. Um, I've just been busy. Haven't washed it all, but I knew I was going to be doing this, so I just said, heck, I'll do it at the same time. Anyway, okay, there we go. You can kind of see the big difference right here in the wall, how it looks. Looks really good. And I'm going to continue, and I'm going to put another coat on here when I get done. Well, we're done with the north side of the house. Um, I, did, I did put two coats on, and it's probably been about another hour since the second coat went on. House looks really good. I really love the product that I use. Um, um, it's that, That's why I use it all the time. I've got it. Anyway, as you can see, I'll give you a shot. Look at the house. Looks really good. I mean, it's it's practically dry. I mean, you can't even, you're not leaving fingerprints. And you can feel, kind of feels almost like a rubbery type. I don't know. But anyway, that's just the way it is. The whole house, I'll hold this whole north side of the house is done. And that is uh, resealing, re redoing all my cracks that you see. I stained just the cracks. And then today I put two coats of clear on. And you can see the difference from where it was before. It was all faded. Even after the first coat it absorbed in there. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do two coats. We need to do it and get it done. I'm happy with it. And that's the way it's supposed to look. And it will look like that now from now on. You know, next I'm going to do my south end of my house to get that done. But once again, I did want to tell you this. This is the product I use. Um, it is Permachink. There, Permachink right there. This is their Lifeline Advanced Gloss. Um, I've used nothing but their products on this house. Um, I've used their stain, and it's special stain for wood logs. You can't paint logs. Um, you can't use regular stain on logs. It, it doesn't work. You've, you've got to have a stain that allows the wood to breathe, not to hold moisture. Also, all my cedars are done on this side. The railings, the trim on the house, on the windows, all three windows are redone. The fascia board inside and in, out on this part is done. So the north side is done. The, the stain I use for that is TWP. It's strictly, and this is a dark oak, it's strictly a stain for cedar. And that's exactly what it is. You, I mean, I've tried using it on a, um, a pine, piece of rough sawn pine one time, and it don't, it, it, it's weird how it works a lot better with, uh, with cedar. Um, but anyway, it's that's the products I use. I'm not sponsored by them. Um, I did notice one thing though. I'm gonna have to order. I'm gonna go ahead and order up um, some more tubes of that that um, caulking stuff, and also some more clear. Um, I'm gonna because I just want to double coat the whole thing, and I've got a gallon left of the clear, and I know that's not gonna be enough. And I know the tubes are probably have enough to do maybe. Uh, a third more of the uh, two thirds of the house, so I need to get more, and I like to have it around. So if you ever need it, you've got it. So um, I'm gonna place an order for some more tubes and f the clear, and I should have enough stain. I don't think I'll be staining, so it should be just all clear. So anyway, okay, hey, this is Tony R. Cabin Woods. Um, if you like what you've seen, subscribe, um, hit the little bell button for notifications if you would. Um, thumbs up also. And um, uh, any comments, anything to do with the staining, um, I'd be glad to ask me, and I'll let you know. Uh, it's just, it's all good. I like the product. Uh, it's Permachink, and um, we're going to move on to the south end of the house tomorrow, and I'm going to start washing that in. That house is dirty down that side. That's where the sun hits. So we're going to hit that side next. That side has no windows. It's the same side as this, but it's no windows at all. Um, We've got a laundry room back on that side. There's a, our master bath is on that side. And our bedroom wall is on that side. And the only reason why I didn't uh, put window there is because I have a massive headboard. It's a log bed. And that headboard consumes 
two-thirds of the height of the wall. It's just a massive headboard, and there's no need to put a window behind there. Didn't want one, so. Anyway, okay, we're going to get going, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.